I'm here at Picnic and I'm joined by Paul Bradshaw. Paul, you're one of the leading bloggers in the UK on journalism. You've been given a presentation here today on what the requirements are for the future of journalism and what future uh, journalists need. What are your, what are your conclusions? Um, well, I, I, I guess the main conclusion is that we should be not focusing on, on journalism as a means, as something that people do, but actually as an end. So how do we help make journalism happen, whether that's something that we do ourselves as journalists or as community managers or um, startup entrepreneurs. You know, I, I think we need to take responsibility for the future of journalism and not be focusing so relentlessly on where people have done journalism in the past. Because I think where people are going to do journalism in the future is, is very different and we need to be preparing people for that. Do you think there's an element of, of traditional journalism being kind of carried, kicking and screaming into the 21st century in that people focus on traditional skills so that I'm either a writer, I'm a broadcaster, I'm a radio journalist and th the term convergence is like a bad word and uh, the NUJ would be very much against it? Yes, I think, and, and I think the NUJ has good reason to be against it because, uh, in some ways because, as I've kind of said in the presentation, we, we run the risk of just training people to do a lot of things at once so filming with a, a, a Kodak ZI8 and um, recording with, uh, with audio boo and, and writing some text as well those skills are all useful but they play to the established media's need for commodified content for cheap content and I don't think that's where the future of journalism is heading I think that's been one of the problems with journalism um, what what I think is needed is is educating people to think for themselves about what skills they're going to need to be able to learn on the job and 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 be innovative in coming up with new ways to do journalism and I run a master's in online journalism at Birmingham City University and one of the things that struck me in the in the first year was that the students did not want to work for the mainstream media they didn't see a future there they were all setting up their own startups they were setting up their own operations finding new ways to fund journalism and I, I, that's tremendously exciting but also depressing for the established news industry because there's a brain drain there if you were um, advising a, a 20 year old who wants to be a journalist about their career path what would you say to them i'd say take it into your own hands and a couple of things first of all do it now don't wait for a job to do journalism and if you're having to wait then is this really the path for you um, and secondly you know don't rely on other people to make this a living for you you know if you're going to go into the established media then chances are you're going to end up in PR in five years when you need to feed a family to be honest so if you really want to make a, a living of this or it's a vocation for you then think of ways of doing it that give you either real financial reward or uh, a personal reward of actually this is something I enjoy doing and you know don't be focusing on what you think of as journalism the people with with uh, the hats and the press cards sticking out of it you know look at multimedia look at data journalism look at community management and I think those are the areas where journalism is going to expand in the future in addition to your online journalism blog you've created a platform to help journalists investigate tell us a bit about that well, it's not to help journalists investigate, I should clarify that, it's to help anyone investigate. It's, it's called helpmeinvestigate.com um, and the, um, the idea is basically that anyone can submit a question that they want to investigate and then the site helps them collaborate with others to investigate those questions. Um, now those people might be journalists, they might be experts, they might be activists, academics, um, students, you know, it, it can be anyone. Most of those investigations will go nowhere. That's the, the beauty of a web. You can have failure and it costs nothing. Um, but one, five, ten, possibly even 20% of investigations will gain some traction. People will get involved. And the, the website basically helps them to do that. And we've, we've had a number of successes um, with that, but, it, but we've also made a lot of mistakes and we're learning as we go. Tell us about your successes. Well, the, the biggest success was, was very early on we did a, a, someone asked what is happening with the Birmingham.gov uh, website, which is the local council website. And um, th there was a flurry of activity on, on the day that that was started. Uh, there was a freedom of information request written, all kinds of, we had inside leaks, we had all kinds of interesting information. And to cut a long story short, we eventually discovered that um, the council was going to overspend by 2.2 million. 
on something that was originally budgeted to cost about £600,000. So it came in about £2.8 million. And that was quite a big story in, in Birmingham. It's, and when the website actually launched, it was extremely disappointing. Um, and the story's rolled on. There's been recent, um, the, the Guardian's reported on it and the Telegraph recently on council website spend. And the Bir Birmingham is, is far and away higher, a much higher cost than anything else. So that was one. There was a, a newspaper that was making false claims, a free newspaper. Um, there was um, uh, avail availability of hormonal contraception on the NHS. It, it's a really varied uh, field of investigations. Before we get washed away, I think we'll say yes. this. Okay, cool. Thanks for your patience. Thank you very much.